Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking with a 2000 Volkswagen New Beetle. It's hard for me to imagine this car is almost a quarter century old. These cars debuted in 1997 for the 1998 model year and were built for 23 model years until 2019 when Volkswagen discontinued finally the New Beetle. Now, the thing about the New Beetle is that this was the first mass produced vehicle that introduced retro styling. Um, um, if you love your 2000 uh, PT Cruiser or your 05 Mustang or your 2008 Challenger, those are all retro machines, you can thank the success of the new Beetle starting in 1997 for the braveness of Plymouth, Ford, and Chevrolet, or Dodge, for relaunching retro styling. It started right here. Let, let alone the new uh, the BMW Mini, which came a few years after this. So this is really the car that brought retro styling back to the American auto industry. And frankly, um, it's a very, very special car. Now, you have to remember, of course, the original Beetles, 21 million of these were sold between 1939 or 38 and 2003 when they stopped building them in Mexico. By contrast, about 3 million of these were sold globally. So not nearly as many, but these were the cars that brought Volkswagen back from the brink of destruction and death in the American market. In 1992, when these things were being designed, Volkswagen was selling about 50,000 cars a year in the U.S. market. They were tanking. They needed something special and something fresh. And that something fresh was designed not in Germany, but in Southern California. Now, here's the story right here. It's a cool book by Matt DiLorenzo, The New Beetle. And this is from 1996 or 7, something like that. And this here shows and describes how Southern Californian, uh, this is Jay Mays here. He was born in Oklahoma. He worked for Volkswagen, as did... Freeman Thomas, this guy here, a Southern California dude. Now, the two of these guys, Jay Mays and Freeman Thomas, went to the Pasadena, uh, the, the Art Center School of Design or College of Design in Pasadena. They graduated. In 1992, they're working for Volkswagen, their Simi Valley uh, Advanced Design Studio. But here's the thing. They wanted this car bad, but they said they had to work in secret. They say here, uh, they had to hide it. He continued to work on sketches in his hotel room in the evenings. Uh, and it says here, the main thing was that we didn't want anyone to know about this idea because we didn't want the idea killed, says Freeman Thomas. Now, here's the thing. The sketches they're talking about are things like these. Now, these now look very normal, but in 1992, when these things were being conjured, the new Beetle, the concept of going backwards with the old Beetle's look was radical, and major management at Volkswagen says, no, we're about technology. The 21st century is just around the corner. We're not looking back. Well, <laughs> they got their way. The good news is the new Beetle and the Golf 4 share the same underpinnings. And we can see right here, those two cars are essentially the same under the skin. And that was the beauty of it. The new Beetle, the business case was easily made because Volkswagen sold millions of Golfs globally. So the Golfs underpinnings are right here. Now, what we want to look at here is the Volkswagen Beetle from 19, uh, the 60s, the cars that hippies fell in love with as the fourth and fifth owners. They were pinnacles of cheap, simple, inexpensive, transportation. And hippies and, and young people generally bought Beetles from the second or third owner for 500 bucks or less and just drove them into the ground. But, but they fell in love with them. But one thing you won't find on an older Beetle is what's here. Now, those would have had a big trunk up here. Well, these, of course, being based on the Golf, have got, I'll squeak in front of you here, these have front wheel drive and transverse engines. Now, the engines are interesting. This one here is the two liter four cylinder, but there were five different engines, four cylinders, five cylinders, and even six cylinders. The 1.9 turbo diesel, the 1.8 dual overhead cam turbo four, this, the two liter single overhead cam four, even a 2.5 liter single overhead cam five cylinder, and the big dog, the 3.2 liter dual overhead cam V6, but that was only in the RSI of 2001 and 2003, and just 250 of those were made. But this is pretty much the most common engine found in a new Beetle. And again, these were fairly peppy, but again, in the original Beetle, this was the frunk, the front trunk. So these are similar to look at, but not by any stretch the same uh, underpinnings. Now, these have a steel body, laser welded, but one exception. Uh, here's the magnet, sticks to the, the hood, 
but not the fenders. The fenders front and rear are made of plastic, but we can see here the beautiful continuation of the Volkswagen bug eye right there from the earlier ones with that big glass headlight. And the themes, the styling themes were continued and uh, just really beautifully and brilliantly done. But again, Jay Mays and Freeman Thomas, two Americans, uh, ramrodded this program against the wishes of Volkswagen management who didn't want to go backwards, but we're glad they did. Let's look inside. And something that's really cool in these, these are available with manual or automatic transmission. This one is a pretty well-preserved example, has the automatic, but we see that little sort of clear plastic thing next to the steering wheel. That's the Blumenwasen or the Bud Vase. Now you gotta remember, in the 50s, Volkswagen dealers had lots of dealer add-ons, and one of them was the little vase for the flower. Well, Volkswagen, with the new Beetle, wanted to add a touch of flower power and whimsy. And every one of these first generations, up to I think 2001, they all all have the Blumenwasen with the little flower, just to sort of add a touch of whimsy. And Volkswagen used to say, hug it or drive it, you know? And these are such cute cars. Now, these were purchased mostly by ladies. I'll say that 60% of sales were to women. And uh, the price on these was about $17,500 on average. There were some strippers, 14 grand-ish, uh, up to 21, 22, fully loaded. But again, about 17,500 would get you a pretty well-optioned Beetle like this one here, power windows. And let's take a look in the back. And again, on the original, Beetle from 39 to 2003, you would find here a horizontal boxer four cylinder. Well, here, I gotta love the key is still here. That's kind of kind of interesting. The Volkswagen logo on the key right there. On the other side, we have the uh, auto lock and stuff. And luckily, this one is. Uh, we can just open that trunk up real easy. But inside, we can see right here, no flat four, of course. This one has a cargo bay. This one has the optional CD changer right there. And uh, oh, how cool is this? The original owner's manual in place right here. Now, this is pretty cool. Little Volkswagen embroidered logos on the front and on the spine. Kind of neat. This one gives you all the information on how it works, safety first, the warranty stuff and all of that. And uh, this is kind of interesting right here. This is a letter from Volkswagen of America uh, dated September two or November 2003. So this car was three years old when this was sent to the original owner. And it's about, uh, as part of Volkswagen's commitment to our environment, we would like to inform you of our decision to extend your emission control system warranty for mass airflow sensors from seven years to this, that, and the other. You gotta remember, uh, three years later in 2009, Volkswagen started building the turbo cars, the diesel cars that uh, had a workaround program built into them to uh, kind of cheat the uh, emission sensors at test stations. So Volkswagen into a multi-billion dollar settlement. This is the tip of that iceberg in a way right here. But again, it's kind of a shock that this car is 24 years old, almost a quarter of a century. And I remember when these things were new, I used to work at Hot Rod Magazine on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. And about 4 a.m. in 1997, we saw a fleet of these things, probably five or six. They were all sort of dark painted, but they were regular production cars with manufacturer plates on them. They were being certified and calibrated during the city driving loop in Los Angeles. And that was when these things were just coming out and a big deal. And to me, these are kind of new still. But again, these were in production, uh, 3 million cars worldwide, again, 1997 through 2019. Now, right now, we know that the Beetle has been discontinued. However, as we all know, there's something called the ID Buzz, which is Volkswagen's electric minibus. And yes, it has the styling of the old microbus, the 23 window. So Volkswagen is still looking back while they're looking ahead. Now, will there be another Beetle? Well, Volkswagen management says never say never. So while these have been out of production for about three or four model years, I bet you there's another gen coming along. It'll be a third gen Beetle. So that's the story of the new old Beetle or the old new Beetle, whatever you want to call it. And again, if you love your new Challenger, um, and keep in mind too, one thing is that these things, the coefficient of drag on this is 0.38, which is okay. By contrast, the, uh, the Golf, which this thing's based on, has a 0.31. So these actually have worse coefficient of drag because they're taller and not as aerodynamic. But in the same way, the Dodge Challenger in 2008, when it came out, the designer said that recessed grill, it stays, even though it costs them a quarter mile per gallon. So in other words, sometimes you have to go backwards uh, fuel efficiency wise to go forward on the showroom floor. So these things weren't as clean as a Golf or a Jetta, but they sold very well. So these cars really brought Volkswagen back in the American marketplace and uh, really very important vehicles. Again, these brought Volkswagen out of its slump in 1992-34 and uh, really established Volkswagen as a leader in style. And Detroit 
played follow the leader. Again, if you love your 05 Mustang, which by the way, Jay Mays left Volkswagen, went to Ford. If you like your 05 Mustang, Jay Mays also did that and this. Kind of cool. So that's a story of the old new Beetle. And uh, if you like this, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. And we'll be back tomorrow with lots more from Bernstein Auto Wrecking.